Hello, welcome to the Good Melanin Morning Podcast. I'm your melanated host, Jay. I invite you to join me as I converse about various day-to-day topics concerning sisterhood, self-care, pop culture, relationships, and empowerment, all from a melanated viewpoint. Although I have a melanated view, these conversations are for all ears. So go grab your latte, sit back, and let's talk melanin. Good morning and welcome back to my podcast. This is your girl, Shay, from, of course, Good Melanin Morning. So today we're going to do this podcast a little different than what I normally would do. Um, I'm not going to even address any of the pop culture talks for today. There's just so much going on that I could talk forever. Anything from the politics all the way through, you know, celebrities being killed and dying anywhere from the awards and to the point where, you know, it's just so much to talk about. So I would rather go ahead and miss that topic for today. But what we're going to talk about for our main topic of discussion is setting boundaries and not feeling guilty. So setting boundaries. A lot of us, we do set them, you know, no matter if it's in a relationship, a friendship, at some form, in some form, we actually set boundaries, whether or not we know we're doing it or not. So we may set boundaries with someone um, by telling them, I can't attend your party. You know, they're having a birthday party. You may consider them as being your best friend, but you can't attend that party because you have another obligation. Um, You may have that person that come to you and ask to loan them money. And you let them know, I'm sorry, I just can't loan it to you. You may have that person that wants you to come hang out with them. Um, They're going to a restaurant or they're going to a bar. And you know that they tend to get a little bit out of control when they're drinking. So you've made the decision within yourself that you just don't want to hang with that individual. So you let them know that when they're drinking, you don't want to hang out with them. Uh, What about that family member? That car may be in the shop or something of that nature. And um, they're coming to you. They're depending on you to take them to work every day. But you just get to the point where you're like, I just cannot do this every day. I cannot take you to work every day. Not anymore anyway. You know, I've done it for a week. Um, I can't do it for the next week or so. Um, Most definitely... We don't want to leave this one out. What about that roommate? At some point, I think all of us may have had a roommate or an individual living with us that may not have held up to their end of the deal, their rent, their utility portion, their cleanliness, or anything, their obligations that they set with you when they first became your roommate. So you get to the point where you tell them that they just got to move out. All of that that I just mentioned is setting boundaries and there is nothing wrong with setting healthy boundaries but however something that tends to happen when we do set those healthy boundaries a lot of us there tends to be guilt that starts to set in um you start ruminating you know you start thinking about the effect of your boundary on that person and um on your relationship it may put a strain on the relationship your your relationship may not seem as friendly as it was before or anything of that nature um you even get to the point where you start questioning questioning i'm sorry your boundaries and you may even start backtracking now that's the worst part when you have put something out in the atmosphere you set that boundary and you said you know what this is it and then all of a sudden you feel so guilty you're like oh man i must i may have hurt that person's feelings you know we we, our relationship is just not the same anymore so you start to backtrack um feeling guilty can cause you sometimes to even break your own boundaries and that's very unhealthy breaking your own boundaries or when you make exceptions 
for what you have set as a boundary with someone, that is telling or teaching someone how to treat you. And you have to be very careful with that. Because if you know it's something that you would not normally do, do not backtrack. Do not make exceptions for that individual because now you just set a new standard. Um, we end up doing things like saying, I'm sorry. Have you ever found yourself being a person that always had to say, I'm sorry for something? Like you may have told that person, I can't take you to work. And then at the end of that day, you know, they may have come back to you after they went to work and came. They'd be like, oh my God, my supervisor was really on me. My manager was telling me that I cannot be late for work anymore. I'm going to lose my job. I'm a single parent. I won't be able to take care of my children or my child. And you just, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I didn't know it. No, no, and no. You do not want to insult yourself. And that is what you start to do when you start to spit out all those slews of I'm sorry for setting those healthy boundaries for yourself. You cannot do that. If you put a boundary out, you stick to it. Yeah, there's times where when you, you know, may decline an invitation, you automatically feel the other person's disappointment. I mean, you can see it written all over their face. You can see that their shoulders just slumped down. The smile, the happy expression just went off of their face and everything like that. And that within itself will cause your guilt to rise. And then what do you find yourself doing? Rearranging your schedule so you can attend that event that you told them that you couldn't go to. Or then you turn around and start thinking within yourself like, oh my God, my time management is terrible. You know, it, I mean, it is, you cannot do that. That is unhealthy for you to backslide. It is unhealthy for you to start putting out all those I'm sorry's for boundaries that you set. You put those boundaries out for a reason. You know what your limits are. You know what you're willing and not willing to do. You know your own internal emotions and how you feel. Don't backtrack on those. You are prioritizing your own needs above someone else's. And that is okay. But unfortunately, in society, you know, it's glorified self-sacrifice. That we should care for somebody else other than our own self. And if we do not care for someone else other than our own self, we're being selfish. It's not selfish in my eyes anyway. What it really is to me is healthy. Let's talk about our families. Um, me personally, I was raised in a Southern family. Um, obviously a African-American Southern family. So we all know that closeness within that family is very important. For example, um, pretty much out of my entire family, I should say my immediate family, um, and I want to go no further than probably, you know, my mother's generation, maybe the generation of before her, which would be more so um, my grandmother's generation. Um, I would say I'm one of the only ones that actually moved away from my family. So I'm not as close with my family as the other family members that may still stay in the same city of Statesboro or they moved, they moved, you know, to maybe another state, but just one state over or something of that nature. So me having joined the military, I'm one of the very few that actually moved away multiple states into another country. So when you are not close within your family in that manner, sometimes it's seen as a disconnection. Well, guess what? When you set boundaries within your family, that can be seen as a disconnection as well. Along with being disrespectful, um, you could be seen as unloving, you know, all of that good old stuff like that. 
Um, in some people eyes, closeness in unhealthy families, you know, is often experienced as sameness or um, some boundaries feel scary and uncomfortable. And when you're in that manner, because you feel like you're letting your family down, you have the tendency to push against your boundaries. And, you know, you say things like, I can't believe you do this to me. Um, you obviously don't care about me. You know, your family would give you that guilt trip. Or even it may come from your parents, something like maybe you lived in another state, another country, you couldn't make that family reunion. And then here come your mother, your father, or another family member saying, you know, your sister would have never missed that family reunion. And they may make you feel guilty because you moved so far away, you know, you can't even make my, my, my daughter's birthday party. You can't even make your nephew's birthday party because you moved so far away. And, you know, then you have that person that may say they feel lonely if you don't call them every day. All of this guilt is being projected onto you. And you are receiving every single bit of it. Um, I mean, for some, when you set those boundaries, it can feel like you are rejecting others and being uncompassionate in their moment of need. Um, but in reality, it's not. You're maintaining successful boundaries um, that kills resentment and it also nurtures our compassion for others. You know, it's like um, you just have to understand that by saying that you cannot do something, you should not feel guilty about it. You should not have to feel like you've let a person down because you cannot do something. And because you know, for example, you chose to not go to that event because you know every time individuals get together, they may start to drink alcohol, there may turn out to be a fight. And you know for yourself that's not healthy for you. So you chose to not go, but now you got others that's making you feel guilty. No, you should not. But anyway, let's go ahead and pray, you know, press fast forward because I don't want to beat a dead horse with that. Um, when you feel guilt coming on, um, because you have set a boundary, you can use statements or you can set mantras, like things like, you know, tell yourself self-talk. It's okay to set boundaries or, you know, something like it's a, you did a good job setting a boundary even though it may make you feel uncomfortable or even though you just feel guilty that does not mean something is wrong because we all know sometimes when we say no it is an automatic negative thing it should not be so we have to just you know give ourselves reminders that it is okay to set boundaries that you did a good job doing so and self-talk yourself and let yourself know there's a reason for doing that. As we all know, if you don't care for yourself, you can't care for others. So if you're allowing yourself to be depleted and drained, what are you going to do for others? How are you going to help them? A lot of times when the guilt feel, you know, it sets in, it makes you feel or you start to think that something is wrong, you know, um, no, you just, you've really done is, um, you misunderstood what boundary setting is. When you feel that you've done something wrong, it means that you just misunderstand what boundary setting is. Um, it's also important to remind yourself that you're not responsible for other people's feelings or comfort level. Like if you, when we were talking about how those shoulders just slump down, you just saw the smile, the disappointment, the smile go off their face, the disappointment set in their face when you told them no, or when you told them that you could not take them to work anymore. Um, you have to understand that you're not responsible for somebody else's feelings. How an individual feels is that individual. It is not you at all. If you continue to take responsibility 
for someone else's feelings, you will always be in that victim space. Hear me again when I say that. If you continue to take responsibility for other people's feelings or comfort level, you will always find yourself in that victim space. You have to understand and honor the fact that every individual has the ultimate responsibility for themselves. That's the reason why we empower everyone to look after their own needs, like I just said. You have to take care of yourself. It's okay to support others in meeting their needs, but we can't be responsible for meeting their needs. We cannot be responsible for making sure that they're happy. So, another thing that I would suggest you do, besides setting reminders to do some self-talk is, um, you, you know, set those boundaries clear and compassionately. I mean, we all know that we can't control how others feel and react to boundaries. Um, we can do our part in delivering our message in a warm and clear way. Like, you know, hey, I'm sorry. Or, you know, I understand that you may not have another way to work. But at this time, I cannot take you because it is causing me this. And I'm sorry, but an individual has to understand. If that person is not a selfish person, they will understand if you doing something for them is putting you in harm's way or jeopardizing you or something of that nature. I mean, uh, you can always empathize with the person, you know, and um, actually describe what's happening. But don't allow yourself to describe what's happening and have that conversation with the individual and find yourself um, steering away from your boundary. You have to firmly maintain your boundary. Um, what do I mean by that? How can you do that? For example, you can tell the individual like, you know, it seems like you're disappointed and angry that um, we're going to be out of town over Christmas and we'll miss the family party. Again, you're out of town. Should you put yourself in a compromising position to try to rush back to that party? You're already out of town or you're going to be out of town. You already have plans for yourself. I mean, you let them know I can understand that. We'll still be out of town. No matter what they try to tell you, let them know I understand but we would still be out of town. I know you would like for me to make the food and you know, be at the get together. However, I'm unable to. For Or you can even come and make a compromise. You know what? Holiday party, how about my family provide a turkey as long as someone else can cook it? I mean, that's a compromise. Let's say you got your family reunion and your mom call you and she's giving you that guilt trip. You're like, mom, you know, um, I'll be able to attend the family function or the family reunion on Saturday, but I cannot attend on Sunday. I wish I could attend both, um, but due to my illness, you may have an illness that you're dealing with. I just won't have the energy to be present at both functions. And not to mention, I have to go to work one Monday. You're telling me that's a four hour drive that I'm going to have to do. I mean, I just need that Sunday for a day to myself to recharge and, you know, take care of my things on that Sunday before I have to go back to work on that Monday. Let them know that you'll be thinking of them and you hope that they have the best fun ever. Point blank, period. I mean, there's just no other way to put it. As I said previously, setting boundaries is healthy and it can actually be a benefit to everyone. When you put others before yourself, it oftentimes leaves you feeling depleted, resentful, 
and your own personal needs feeling unmet. And what happens, you then turn to others to get your needs met. And then what do they do? They do it out of a similar sense of obligation and in order to avoid guilt. So that cycle continues. The same exact cycle that we want you to avoid the guilt, the obligation to do something. You just push that off onto someone else to have to deal with it. So we need to acknowledge the power of boundaries. The, you know, putting those boundaries in place not only benefits you, but it could benefit the other individual as well. And it's very healthy and it serves everyone. Um, let's see. You have to identify your personal reasons for setting a boundary. When you let someone know why you cannot do something or you tell them you cannot do something, are you obligated to tell them why? No, you're not. But if you find yourself being inclined to do so, let them know. Tell them it's something in relation to your personal values. No one wants you to go against your own personal values. For example, remember when I told you about that, that event that you may go to with the family and you know when everyone gets together, they start to drink, they start to break out, there's negative energy, they start to fight. I mean, no, in order for me to reduce my stress and my resentment of my family members and to continue to keep my relationship strong, I, I think it's better that I don't attend. That's your personal feelings. That's your personal values. You're putting their family to the point where you don't want to break that relationship. So you just know that you're not going to be able to attend. So that's a personal reason for you setting a boundary. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, um... In order for us to thrive as humans, we have to maintain our internal and our external resources. By sustaining that healthy flow of giving and receiving resources, you know, it's important for our individual health and the health of our relationships. We have to do it. Um, what do I mean by external resources? I'm talking about things like your time, your money, money and your energy, your internal internal resources include things like, you know, the attention and compassion and vulnerability, you know, things like that. When we utilize our resources, it affects things like our mind, body and our soul. And because it does affect those things, that's why it's very vital for us to consider how much time attention and energy we have to devote to an activity so that we can be in a good mood because if we're in a bad mood everything else from going to go downhill from there we all know that um setting the boundary don't come overnight it takes skill but always remember in order for you to become better at a skill you have to practice um, the more you practice, of course, the more less guilt you're going to have and fear you're going to feel. And also, you know, the more accustomed to people will become, the more, I'm sorry, the more accustomed to your boundaries, other people will become. So they get to the point where they won't even ask you to do that. They won't even ask you to take them to work because they know that you got that boundary. They won't even ask you to loan them that money because you got that boundary. So the more you practice, the more skilled you become at setting your boundaries and implementing those boundaries, you will also begin to find yourself making a huge shift in how people treat you. Like I said previously, anytime you blur those boundaries that you set, anytime you backslide on those boundaries that you set, Anytime you go back and apologize for a boundary you set, you just taught somebody how to treat you. You just told somebody what you're willing to accept. And trust and believe, everybody out there in society don't have that compassion at heart. Some people will take advantage of it to the fullest. I know if I go ask her this, she's gonna do this because she feel guilty about this. No. 
but they will do it. So you have to be very careful of that. Once you are able to become more skilled in setting your boundaries, following through with your boundaries, I'm telling you, you will begin to have a huge shift in how people treat you. So, being that I'm not the person that like to waste your time or my time, I'm going to go ahead and end this podcast today, which was on setting boundaries and not feeling guilty. So as always, if you have any comments, please make sure you post your comments below. And you know, tell me about some of those boundaries. Do you agree that you have to set boundaries within relationships? Do you agree that if you allow those boundaries to be blurred, that it would allow others to see and know how to treat you? And that's what they would start to implement. And quite truth be told, it all just goes downhill from there. Once a person um, starts to treat you in a manner that you don't like to be treated in or that you do not deserve below what you deserve, yeah, it all goes downhill. So again, if you have any topics that you would like for me to discuss on my podcast, or if you would like to be a guest on my podcast, please make sure you email me at gmelaninm at gmail.com. Again, that's g-m-e-l-a-n-i-n-m at gmail.com. And I will get in contact with you to let you know what we would do from that point, either to get you onto the podcast or in order to discuss some topics that you may want to talk about. Um, Please make sure, as always, you subscribe, you share my podcast. You can find me on all social media outlets up under Good Melanin Morning and um, just if you find it beneficial to listen, if you find it enlightening and empowering, please make sure you share my podcast. So um, I'm going to go ahead, like I said, and end this podcast. Um, make sure you set them boundaries. Don't let people blur them. Don't feel guilty for doing it because I'm telling you nobody else will. This is your girl Jay from Good Melon and Morning and... I will be back with you to talk tomorrow. And as always, see you next time. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed our conversation. If so, please make sure to keep up with us on Facebook and Instagram at Good Melanin Morning. Before you go, always remember, it's a great day to be melanin.